So the holier-than-thou neo-puritans, and probably some paid bots, have gone into full meltdown on Twitter after British millionaire Ben Goldsmith described Meghan Markle as, quote, a manipulative bully. No, uh, a thousand times, no. Now I'm going to preempt some of the negative comments on this video by saying, if it's an ad hominem attack, shut up. I'm way ahead of you. Yes, Ben Goldsmith is the son of a billionaire. Yes, Ben Goldsmith comes across as a little out of touch with the common man. Yes, Ben Goldsmith describes himself as an ardent Zionist. <laughs> I know all of these things. The guy comes across as a cretin. That doesn't mean he's wrong, because he's right in this case. Probably wrong about some other things, but he's right about Meghan. British billionaire's son sparks outrage with brutal Meghan Markle dig. The writer of this article wanted to make his bias absolutely clear right from the beginning. <laughs> Didn't want to leave anything up for interpretation. British billionaire's son, bastard in other words, brutal dig. It sparked outrage. Everyone is outraged. You should be outraged. A British billionaire's son, get that into your head, right? It's some arsehole British billionaire's son, so his opinions mean fuck all. A British billionaire's son has sparked outrage after claiming that Meghan Markle is a manipulative bully. Ben Goldsmith, the youngest son of the late billionaire, remember he's the son of a billionaire, the youngest son of the late billionaire Sir James Goldsmith, made the allegation in a tweet responding to claims that the Duchess of Sussex was a victim of racism. One thing I think we have to be absolutely clear on is that uh, Meghan Markle is not the victim of racism, certainly not on a large scale. There are undoubtedly individual racists who make racist remarks about Meghan Markle, don't get me wrong, but the vast majority of people who dislike her dislike her because of her personality. She comes across as very narcissistic, she comes across as very self-centered, very lacking in self-awareness, very false, vacuous and inane in what she says, and that is why people have grown to dislike her, because they didn't dislike her at first. And absolutely nobody would have had any problem with her marrying into the royal family or even leaving the royal family. But leaving the royal family because you don't want all of the attention and all of the duties that come with being a member of the royal family and all the restrictions on your freedoms. Then going and selling your sob story to Oprah, to Netflix, to Spotify is sickening to most people. And then to constantly portray yourself as a victim. You're the victim of nothing other than your lack of self-awareness because you're a narcissist. Meghan Markle is a narcissist. She can't see herself. She can't see why all of the people around her dislike her. Or a lot of the people around her dislike her. She can't see it. That's what pathological narcissists live with. They really feel like victims because they create scenarios around them where everyone starts to dislike them and avoid them. But that is not everybody else's fault. And she will never realise this. So people who follow her and believe her side of the story are never going to hear anything different. Always going to be a victim narrative. I wanted to keep this video light-hearted today. Let's get back to the article. <laughs> the millionaire financier wrote, We are far from perfect, but poll after poll shows British people to be among the most welcoming and least racist anywhere. I agree. I as a white man agree with that. <laughs> it's great. In all seriousness, though, I do agree with the sentiment of his tweet there. We are far from perfect. There is racism in our society. But the fact that the vast majority of people in England dislike Meghan Markle doesn't really reflect the levels of racism in our society. I don't think that many people are racist. The amount of people that dislike Meghan Markle is disproportionate to the amount of racists we have in the country. There's too many people disliking Meghan Markle for it to only be racists. If there was that much racism in the country, we'd be having a civil war. Sorry, I don't buy it. At the start, Meghan was adored. Crowds thronged the streets at the wedding. Meghan is disliked because she is a manipulative bully who got found out. When he's right, he's right. Goldsmith41 continued, Meghan has come to personify the arrival of America's deranged culture wars in Britain. Again, Ben Goldsmith hits the nail on the head here. The UK absolutely tries to emulate US culture in many ways, though we don't like to admit it. Our films, our music, our TV is very heavily influenced by the US. It seems that a lot of the time we want to play make-believe and imitate the violence and the controversy and the chaos that's going on in the States a lot of the time. Sort of hyperbolic 
Hollywood exaggerated culture. We don't have that in the UK, but we sometimes like to pretend that we do. We saw the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020 in the US and we kind of tried to imitate it in the UK and toppled a few statues, did a bit of graffiti. Uh, just not the same. We don't have it in us. The eyes of the world are undoubtedly on America and I, I see this in a more exaggerated form here in Spain. In Spain we live in as violent crime free a nation as you're likely to find on Earth. There are probably a handful of other countries with less violent crime, maybe Japan, Denmark, places like that. Yet you watch the TV series here and there's gun battles and drug lords everywhere. <laughs> it's make-believe. Spain isn't like that. I take my kids out to bars and restaurants at the weekend and don't think twice about it. Everyone does it. At night, you'll often go with your parents. It's a very family-oriented, safe, traditional culture. Yet they go home at night and they watch these violent series on the TV. Now, England is a far more violent culture than Spain. Absolutely, don't get me wrong, but it's not America, right? And we still have to turn it up a notch in our culture, though, on the TV, Peaky Blinders, as if the turn of the century in Birmingham was as violent as they make out in Peaky Blinders. Everyone was blowing each other up and doing deals with the Sicilian Mafia. It's a load of shite. It never happened. Absolutely refuse to watch that crap. Well, these culture wars that are here now, where we're all fighting about race and stuff like that, is all bullshit. It's purely the result of social media amplifying what the TV tried to do for decades. The news sensationalising everything. Well, now social media does it, but it arrives in the pockets of 13-year-olds. And now we find ourselves in a nation full of hormonal, emotionally unstable adolescents who believe they're racial equality activists or something. No, you're not. Do your homework. Parents, take the phone off your kids. Your kids are not Nelson Mandela. They're idiots. Back to the article. His accusations immediately caused backlash and people were quick to defend Prince Harry's wife. Here you get some top quality reporting. <laughs> Responding to his tweet, one user wrote... You are the one who is a bully. You should be ashamed of yourself. I don't know anything about Megan's character, and neither do you, Ben. Another user replied. Another one wrote, Ben Goldsmith is actually bullying Megan by calling her a bully without a shred of evidence. When is this going to stop? Another fan who was commenting on the ongoing criticism of Markle said, Quite simply, there is nothing wrong with Meghan Markle. <laughs> Delusional take, but okay. Equally simply, anyone who singles her out for public criticism, hatred and vilification does have something wrong with them. Are you sure? All of them? <laughs> Here the article tries to go into finer details about the wording of Goldsmith's criticisms, calling her a bully. I think that distracts from the main argument. I think his main point was that she's not disliked because people are racist, she's disliked because she's dislikable. But they don't get that. People who are set on defending Meghan will find absolutely every logical fallacy that they can to defend her, but they will never address the point, the main point. She's just very annoying and dislikable. Bullying claims against Markle first came to light a few days before the broadcasting of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's controversial interview with Oprah Winfrey in March 2021. So what they're trying to suggest here is that that was no coincidence. They were, it was an inside job. They tried to, that may be the case. But it still distracts from the main point. Yes, they might have wanted to get the stories of the bullying out before she did the interview. I can't prove or disprove that. Neither can you. Distracts from the main point that in that interview she came across as an absolute ass. And everything she's done since, she's come across as an ass. Whether she's a bully as well is yet to be proved. However, the Times published an extensive report alleging that Markle had faced a bullying complaint from staff in 2018. The Duchess of Sussex's lawyers said the allegations were part of a calculated smear campaign engineered by Buckingham Palace. Well, her lawyers would say that, wouldn't they? A statement issued by Markle's spokesman said, Markle's spokesman, a man employed to be her spokesman, the person who speaks for her, her advocate, Let's just call this what it is. A calculated smear campaign based on misleading and harmful information. She's great. She pays me really well. It's no coincidence that distorted several-year-old accusations aimed at undermining the Duchess are being briefed to the British media shortly before she and the Duke are due to speak openly and honestly. <laughs> Good one. Openly and <laughs> honestly. 
about their experience of recent years. They added, The Duchess is saddened by this latest attack on her character, particularly as someone who has been the target of bullying herself and is deeply committed to supporting those who have experienced pain and trauma. More like exploiting those who've experienced pain and trauma. Allegedly. She is determined to continue her work building compassion around the world. <laughs> Building compassion around the world and will keep striving to set an example for doing what is right and doing what is good. In June 2022, the Times reported that the results of the inquiry into bullying made Buckingham Palace modify some of its HR policies and procedures. But the report remained private. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced their decision to step back as senior members of the royal family in January 2020. The couple said they planned to split their time between the UK and US and become financially independent. The only way they knew how. Bloody grifters. Disrespecting Her Majesty the Queen of England like they did. They ought to be bloody ashamed of themselves. And if you like a blood sausage, Elliot's on Gath Street. Mention my name. 